Hey, it's Andrew Huang. In today's video, we have some amazing guests. We're gonna be hearing from Sun Lux, AJR, and Kate Aurelia Smith. And we also are gonna be using a sample from Hiatus Coyote. And uh, Simon and Bender from Hiatus Coyote are gonna be listening to our tracks as well. Thank you to today's sponsor, Universal Audio, for making this all happen. We're gonna be using a bunch of plugins that are available through UAD Spark. And if you're interested, for a limited time, you can get three months of Spark for just 99 cents. The link for that is in the video description. Uh, let me show you the sample we're working with today. So we've got some stems from the last Hiatus Coyote album, Mood Valiant, one of my favorite records of the last few years. We have the stems from the first track, Flight of the Tiger Lily. Um, just four stems here. So the first one, Napalm's beautiful vocals. Also got some lovely strings. And there's a track with some Mellotron and samples. Parrot, Bawa. And lastly, this bowed bass part, which in the stem, for some reason, they paired with a bunch of like echoey bird sounds. So those are the pieces that we each used as a starting point for our own original tracks. Here's what everybody came up with. Hey, this is Ryan from Sunlux. My name's Ian Chang from Sunlux. Rafik from Sunlux here. Excited to talk about this track, how we pulled it all apart, put it back together again in a new way. I pulled up the um, the vocal track first, um, threw it into contact, played it back super fast. It's a short piece of music, so what if we, you know, thought about this, the whole piece of music is one sample. For comparison, this is what it sounds like normal. And here's, uh, here's sped up. I pulled up this uh, Phosphat, super cool creative utility for infusing your tracks with uh, low-end oscillation and, and some noise. One of the things I like to look for is, is uh, the verb tail of a sound um, and then use that as uh, maybe a starting point for uh, building an instrument. That's what I did here. And then I, I realized playing it up high sounds like a gong. Did that, I wrote a couple different parts. I wrote a B section that sounds like this. Then I pulled up this incredible new organ, uh, UAD, the Waterfall B3. Um, one of my favorite sounds of the B3 is, um, is just the percussion sound. And through the um, through the Leslie, it sounds so cool. This interface is insane. You can pick all your you know your mics and your mic position. You can adjust the preamp and everything like that. It's super versatile. I love this sound. I, I love it even more slowed down. So what I did is I, I wrote a line and then I played it fast, knowing that it would speed it up. I did that at three different octave levels and I combined them and it sounds like this. It just sounds so watery. I built this sound before with a with a real organ, and it's really cool to be able to also do it in the virtual realm now. Then I, I pulled up the bass stem again, and I found like a little spot of the melody, played up high, and used phosphat to make it like sandpapery. And then I feel like I had enough material that I could then pass it off to Ian to see if he could find uh, the song's identity. The first couple things that I really wanted to accomplish were some drums for the track, and then also to add some bigger chops, things that just like feel really recognizable. With the drums, I built it mainly around samples that I made using my cajon, which is right here. I think most of the samples, I was knocking it with my knuckles. There's the main knock. There's a few things that are making this sound the way that it does. Echo is a big element, so without the echo, with it, I put a pitched envelope on it at plus eight. I put a high pass filter on it with like a pretty intense resonance at about 400 without it, with it. And you know, I put Omega 458A by Kush Audio and the UAD 1176 Rev A. There's sort of what you can describe as like the hi-hat part. So not much to it, transpose it up 10 steps, put a little saturation and a tiny bit of plate on it to give it a sense of space, and then sort of an accent knock. I put the UAD SPL transient designer and crank the sustain all the way up. It kind of over-exaggerates the floor noise and the room tone without it. With it. So it gives it a sense of space, but not in the same way that a reverb does. Um, the kick I used is just from a recording session I did a while back. 
I grabbed a sample from the beginning of the Mellotron stem, turned them into these samples. One instance is just sort of pitched up. The other one is lower and it's got a bit of a pitch oscillator on it. Altogether, the drums sound like this. For the groove of this, I really wanted to add some swing. So I mapped the samples in the drum rack to my drum kit, which has mesh heads on it. The next thing I did was make one of these big chops I was talking about. First thing that I found was this vocal sample. Pitched it up, added a little sub instrument, and it sounded really nice together. Ryan passed me a few other elements using uh, UAD's B3. I just created like a little reverse and release moment. Okay, so after uh, Ian um, worked his magic, I started to explore supporting some of the implied harmonies um, and even looking for a vocal melody and uh, wrote, yeah, wrote some lyrics as well. This is UAD's new piano, uh, Ravel. It's super dope. I just pulled up the fresh instance of Waterfall B3 and the piano, and I just found a song form for it that he was already uh, moving in the direction of developing. I mean, dude, this organ is insane. I thought it would be really cool to take this vocal, um, this original vocal sped up loop, and then do like a version of it on the B3. Once I had the chord progression um, established for the, the B section, I immediately kind of came up with this vocal melody. When I got this track from Ryan and Ian, it was feeling really fully formed. There was a moment where I almost wondered if it needed anything from me. I personally always feel like bass can be an exciting way to add a lot of rhythmic interest to music and it can serve a really melodic purpose. I kind of crafted bass figures to provide more support for this thing that's happening melodically. When Ryan has this kind of organ aspect, it has this kind of lurching quality. And I was like, I wonder if there could be some sort of melodic phrase that happened in the bass that could serve as a handoff to that. I've been using Universal Audio's console and their Unison functionality to get a sound that feels pretty close to me to how it feels to play through an amp. I'm using a number of their plugins to kind of add more harmonics like the V76 preamp, things like the Pultec Pro, the TubeTech CL1B, this API EQ. So anyway, there you have it. We really enjoyed making this version of this track and we hope you enjoy it. Oh, wow. Really nice hi-fi sounds. What's going on with these vocals? Those vocals are so cool. Sick bass line. The flam snare. Oh my god. All the attack taken out of the piano, it's so cool sounding. Some of these little hits of distortion are really fun. Oh, such a pocket. To a really cool song. This vibe is so good. Woo! Oh, cool thing they did with the organ, chopping it up. It's beautiful. 
beautiful, just amazing use of space all the way throughout. How we like blend it back into the original sample at the end there. Wow. That was crazy. Yeah. yeah. Distortion was nice. They made a really beautiful song out of it. That's awesome. Oh, that was really cool. The, the, they have such cool sounds. Loved it. My mind is blown. <laughs> We are AJR, we're an indie pop band from New York City, and today we're gonna make a beat out of Hiatus Coyote's Flight of the Tiger Lily. Let's do it. Immediately, we both thought that we should swing the beat and do something kind of funky, like da, 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 da. We like to use a lot of splice samples, but we like to kind of pitch them up and down, manipulate them, layer them until they sound like our own stuff. Like that if it was dan, da, 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 da. Oh, cool. That's cool. All right, that's fine then. Now let me cut up the strings. This is the uh, opal from UAD. Some cool sounds in here. All right, uh, let me find a good bass. Down all the synth stuff, but a big thing that we try to do with the AJR music is we try to juxtapose synths with more real instruments. So let's get a whole bunch of cool electronic sounds and then let's add in like clarinets or flutes or something. Yeah, maybe flutes for that. Something like that, yeah. Oh, and then I'll add harmonies. And let's go back to the uh, stems there and see what else we can throw in. Yeah, Paris, Paris, something like that. Should I put like distortion on it? Let's try to make an intro. Like, let's go back to the sample and see what else we have. Here, we can turn that into something. Yeah. Okay, so let me uh, add in a string thing there. Strings or horns? Do horn. I like this uh, UAD Manly Vox box. It's, I think it's maybe made for vocals, but I end up putting it on brass and stuff. I use this on all of Jack's vocals and everything. This kind of saturates everything, feels really good. Let me do piano. This is now my go-to piano. Yeah, that sounds right. I kind of like it out of tune, out of time also. And now I'm gonna run this through this UAD spark plugin called Galaxy. It's this cool delay. What do you think, like pizzicato strings? Yeah. Okay, and then like an organ melody over that. Now I just need uh, a little more bass and that builds up and then I think we should be good. Yeah. What if I pitch that down? Try it. Awesome. This turned out cool. Yeah, this sounds great. All right, that's how we flip the sample. We're AJR. Enjoy. <laughs> That's a fun shop of the, the talking part. <laughs> Loud. Super groovy. It's always so fun hearing how many different rhythms, how many different interpretations there are. I love how they use that uh, talking sample at the end there. Ooh, I like this brass part. Didn't expect that. This is very, 
very summer jam vibes. This is like the hype music they're playing at the party when you show up. <laughs> it's like your announcement music. From AJR. A little fun time guy. I just feel like I could go do anything after listening to that. Such a blast. It's really inspiring. Wow, yeah, that, that whole thing was so fun. Hello, I'm Caitlin Aurelia Smith, and I'm a synthesis producer composer. When I first got the track, I listened through for which elements I wanted to begin with. And I really liked this vocal loop, so I created a loop out of it and then added in other parts of the track to create an environment that was different timing than the original track. I next created a sampled instrument out of the original track using the little vocal loop that I took out of the track. Also created like a cello line from one of the string parts of the original track. Then I created a lot of hardware melodies and environments using a Buchla Music Easel, a Buchla 200E, a Wasp, and an Oberheim Sun, lots of ear candy, created some more vocal lines. I wanted to use the UAD Opal Morphing Synth to create some high-end sibilance that some of the hardware synths that I have aren't able to make. Also created some additional string lines. And then I usually have lots of tracks because I like to send MIDI to the hardware synths and then bounce down. A lot of this is like variations of sampled instruments from the original track that I was given and MIDI that I sent to the hardware and then bounced down. And it created the main track that you're going to hear. Ooh, I love these little little zippy sounds. This is confusing, which I like. Whoa. Oh, damn. Oh, wow. I'm totally hearing the pulse differently than I first did. I don't know how Caitlin always makes such amazing, weird, unique worlds. I love the formented vocals. And I love all of these layered rhythms. Such a cool, slow evolution. So the layers of the onion keep getting peeled back. kind of hooky, it's cool. Awesome melodies. There's so many layers with like so many notes and it's all working. Sounds like it's behind me. That's awesome. Oh my god. Something 
What's happening? It's hypnotizing. Oh my god. Ray tries it. Yeah. Oh, we got in another chapter. Wow, we've gone to such a different place from where we started. I love it. So much wonderful unpredictability. It's like a bunch of space particles congealing into a giant meteor. Push and pull between all these different layers is incredible. Reminds me of some like early Terry Riley stuff. That was cool. That was really yeah. Happy. Wow. That felt like a dream. That did. It's totally mesmerizing. Oh man, another journey. That was fresh. Mm. It's great. Wow, I feel like I just went to another dimension and back. That was beautiful. So I loved these stems we had to work with, um, but I was particularly drawn to the strings and I started my track off by trying to melodyne them to play a different melody, uh, which didn't really work out. So I just started looping different chunks of the stems and trying to uh, make a beat. Got some crunchy drums in there, different parts of Nay's vocals coming in and out. So here I'm using a few parts of the original strings from the stems, but then I've got MIDI strings going on top and I actually hired a couple players to uh, double the MIDI. So we've got original strings, and then with my strings on top. Now I actually don't really know much about producing real strings, but what I settled on was putting an LA-2A on most of them individually for compressing, and then uh, compressing the bus with uh, the Precision Bus Comp, which is uh, one of my favorites for nice, gentle, transparent compression. So as I continued playing with the sample, I ended up putting the vocals into a sampler, putting this auto slice by transient stuff on, trying out different sensitivities and finding where it uh, kind of automatically gave me a few different chops and then playing with them on a keyboard. So I'm really driving that with this API channel strip as well as putting it through uh, the Galaxy Tape Echo. If we turn those off, this is what it's like dry. So I built that out into a different section of my beat by uh, looping some of my strings, both my strings and the strings from the sample. Changed up the drum beat. And then I brought in the mini Moog for a nice juicy bass line. And then I go to a bigger section, I switch up the bass line and also layer it up with three other synths. We've got one other mini Moog, heating this one up with the API channel strip, and then I've got two opals. And these eventually are all layered together. And in that section, I uh, double time the vocal chops and uh, later on put them up an octave. Go a little glidey with the pitch too. I did bring back that idea of melodyning the strings, but I just altered them slightly, just moved a couple notes to fit with my chord progression. On its own, it's really not too far off from what it was originally, but when I layer that in, it takes on this like very different epic quality. I almost feel like it's like a superhero movie type of thing. I don't know. <laughs> Now 
Now, a few more details that I want to show you that are small, but I think make a big difference. Um, I did some sound design in Opal and came up with some cool cymbal sounds, and I just printed them to audio because I was really messing with the parameters a lot. They sound like this, and like this. Also reversed this one. Oh, and those are going into uh, a lot of reverb, as you can hear, I'm using uh, the Lex. Another little detail, this ARP from Opal. Just a little stab that I used two times in the track. Oh man, this thing. That came from uh, the part of the sample where there's like bird sounds and I just, I was trying to make it into something and it's just so disguised that it's kind of pointless that it came from the sample. Automated the volume and ran it through some sample rate reduction. I don't know, it is the sample and I think it adds something to the beat. It's got this nice crunchy clappy texture. I also played in my own bass line in this section. And then the last thing I'll share, I kept on playing with uh, that bird stuff and I ended up reversing it. Just a way to create a swell that's more interesting than just like white noise or whatever. And another kind of transition technique was uh, just having some distortion automate up. I did that in the beginning on the Mellotron and Samples sample. So those are all the main details and techniques in my track. Here's how it all came together. Hope you enjoy. Mysterious. Right, like a movie score. Yeah. It's cool right away, you can hear the sample. Oh yeah. Oh. oh. Super fun beat. Yeah, and this one you can really hear all the samples. Can you add a bunch of string stuff? That's so sick. I love this bass line. This one I feel like is such a clear distinction between what was the original samples and what the song turned into. I really like it. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Loved that. Damn, that had so much energy. Well done, Andrew. Nice one, Andrew. I love different brains. This is so cool. Everyone did something so different. All right. Thank you to everybody who joined me on the show today. Love all your work. Thank you to Universal Audio for sponsoring this video. And remember, you can get three months of their Spark subscription for 99 cents. Use the link in the description. It's only available for a limited time. So uh, hit that up. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next one.